Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. So good morning uh, Zambia. So Dr. Fred Membe has officially been uh, committed to the High Court. This is an offense where he was allegedly charged with the offense of uh, espionage. So we look forward to a day in court and we are ready. Right, uh, Mr. President, we understand that you've been now interacting with uh, a lot of Zambians. What is the situation on the ground? Also, uh, just on top of that, we want to find out um, the, uh, the President's position after the debt restructuring is that the economy will now pick up. Um, is that feasible? Yes, it's true. I've been and they're not so well to do. The cost of living is rising. It's not going down. It's rising. Putting food on the table is increasing and becoming difficult. Meeting the cost of health services, buying medicines is difficult. The cost of transportation is also rising. It's difficult for many of our people to afford public transport. It's, many, it's, it's extremely difficult for many of our people to put fuel in their vehicles or even to service them. And the situation is going to get worse with the poor harvest that is coming or that is expected. On top of that, jobs are being lost every day. Many businesses, especially the smaller ones, are closing every day. And the people are not finding alternative work to do. So, the situation in the country is a bit sombre. It's difficult for our people. Konseko ole ya bantubare ilishanya. Insala, insala, insala. Every day ulepo kirama phone from your relatives, from Babururu. It's all about food. It's about medicine. Many of our people in the urban areas, ama rent ya reishupa, okuli pirama rent. There are evictions every day. This is not a way or the way human beings should live. People need a bit of stability in their lives. People need a bit of certainty in their lives. You wake up tomorrow, you don't know what you are going to eat. You don't know where the units for electricity are going to come from. You don't know where you are going to get money for medicines. You don't know where to get money for the rentals. These are the challenges people are coming up with, uh, with to us every day. The debt restructuring. It may please us that our debt has been restructured or is being restructured, but it guarantees us nothing. It guarantees us nothing. We have not paid. We have not been paying any debts over the last two and a half years, or almost three years. But we still have problems. Debt restructuring is not a debt write-off. They are just postponing the payments or restructuring the way you pay your back your debt. You still have to pay. You were not paying over the last three years or so. Now you have to start paying something periodically. I don't know how that will improve our, our living conditions. I hope it will help. 
we wish the best for our people, for our country. We socialist patriots. We don't want to defeat Mr. Hitchlin on the back of national failure. There will be many reasons to defeat him in 2026. But even that background, uh, you know that it's uh, unlike your community of the countries. If the restructuring process going forward, do you think that's second step? The problem is on this face. And what must be done? The, the problem is bigger. You are talking about the historical debt which the current government found. But nobody is talking about the debt that is being incurred. The current government is borrowing. What they are doing with the historical debt, they are passing it on to future generations to deal with, to the next governments that will come after them. But they are still borrowing. It increases their debt capacity. And they are using that debt capacity to borrow. So they are borrowing. Borrowing has not ended in Zambia. But it's being projected as borrowing has ended. It's just dealing with what was borrowed. We are still borrowing. Is there any message of hope for the Zambia uh, uh, the current government and uh, its leadership? Zambians have no alternative but to struggle. If they have to harbor any hope of survival. If you go to sleep, you go to slumber, you don't struggle, you perish. When you are facing a crisis, do you go under a tree and just sleep? you make the best of the little energy that you have. We have to struggle for a better future. We have to struggle for survival. And so that's what must be done economically to reverse the situation. It starts with ownership. You have to start owning your economy so that you take care of your own destiny. What you don't own, you can't control. You can't manage what is not yours. You can make as much noise as possible as you can. But what you don't own, you can't control. You can only control what you own to a large extent. Maybe uh, Dr. Mishwadi. Um, so, uh, Dr. Fredman, they have been fearless in um, providing checks and balances. And I remember at some point he advised government on the issue of uh, introducing the Africa in Zambia. But where is this narrative to label Dr. Nende and the Socialist Party as dictator coming from? Thank you. Um, indeed, where is the narrative coming from? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you are talking about hunger, this is not Fred Member talking. The Zambian people are talking about hunger. Get on the minibus today, go to the markets today and ask Zambians what's the major problem in the country. They will tell you Njala. So Njala is everywhere. When Fredu Membe is articulating those issues, he's a spokesperson of the voiceless. How does the bitterness come in? Fredu Membe is talking about corruption extensively so. He has talked about fertilizers, he has talked about corruption in mining, he has talked about corruption and tribalism in appointments in the public sector. Is that being bitter? That is pointing out a dangerous trend that is uh, happening in our country. That Those are the checks and balances this country needs. Fred Mbembe indeed he talked about Africa that AFRICOM is about Americans, about imperialism, cementing itself on Zambian soils. And it isn't just Fred we be talking about it. The neighboring countries are worried about it. Zimbabwean diplomats, Zimbabwean ministers have talked about it. So this goes beyond Fred Mbembe. Fred Mbembe is talking about the problems of regionalism, ethnicities. And this is not something that is limited to him. This is what the whole country is talking about. You find a whole minister, this is government spokesperson, actually saying, we engineered the situation where the Tonga people had to be insulted so that sympathy can accrue to us. Listen to it carefully. Here's a government 
that says actually we paid people so that they could insult our constituency so that sympathy can come to us. And what did Fred Member do? Fred Member reported to the police. It's a crime. Has that person been arrested? Has that person been fired? The answer is no. So how does the bitterness come in? Fred Member is a president of an opposition political party. He represents that voice that you call checks and balances. It's not called bitterness. That's how governments run. That's how society runs. Those Tonga people that are being insulted, what have they done wrong to the UPND? This is the base of the UPND. They have been faithful voters. People of Western Province have been faithful voters. You go somewhere without being provoked, you are telling them you don't exist, but Roseland doesn't exist. And all that Fred member says is, look here, Barossaland has been there even before Zambia. What are you talking about? Then you are saying Fred member is bitter. So Fred member, the way it is today, he is that voice that Zambia needs. Fred member is talking about the failures, the incapacity, the incompetence, the narrowness of the current government. That's what he's talking about. Now, it's cheap, very, very cheap. When that voice of the masses, when the masses are articulating issues, they are talking about hunger, they are talking about corruption. And then you try to politicize that by saying it's uh, bitterness. Of course everything is politics. But when you say it's bitterness, you are insulting the knowledge of the masses, the wisdom of the masses. Because it's the masses that are talking about hunger, it's the masses that are saying there's corruption. It's the masses that are saying agricultural policies are wrong. It's the masses that are saying Africa is a danger to Zambia. So indeed, when you talk about freedom maybe being bitter, people start looking around. What is it that he has said? What is it that he's being accused of? And they will discover that actually he's telling the truth. So let them continue. Let them continue. That is positive propaganda for freedom maybe. You can write about it in Causeway and everywhere else, but the truth is that the people of Zambia are not dumb. The people of Zambia are seeing failure. The people of Zambia are seeing arrogance. And that's what it is. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.